Welcome to Duro Tutors. My name is uh, Mr. James, and I'm the chemistry teacher of Duro Tutors. So I'm here to take you through chemistry class for the jam. So number one, a slight oxidation impacts a brown color on trihydronitrate 5 acid. Prepare in the laboratory is the question. The color can be removed by. Now we have options there. But then, that impact of the trigonitrate 5 will produce nitrogen 2 oxide, which can easily be oxidized to nitrogen 4 oxide that produces the drop brown coloration. Then, the answer to this question is passing the acid through water. So, can we go to the next question? How many moles of oxygen will contain 1.204 raised power 24 molecules? Then we are giving Avogadro's constant already, which is 6.02 multiplied by 10 raised power 23 constant. Then we need a formula here, where we have it as N equals to L. So you can see we have capital letter N, number of particles. Then the small letter here comes as number of moles. Then Avogadro's constant. So making N, which is small N now, uh, the subject of the formula, we have N over L. So substituting, we have 1.204 times 10 to the power 24 over 6.02 multiplied by 10 to the power 23. And without using calculator, I want to make this one a whole number as well. So if I take 10 out of this, I'll be having 12.04 multiplied by 10 to the power 23 divided by 6.02 multiply by 10 to the power 23 as well. So this one cancels out. And how many times will this 6.02 go in 12.04? It will go two times. So to answer that question becomes B, which is a two. Question number three. What is the molecular formula of a compound whose empirical formula is CH2O? Our molar mass is equal to 180. So what we have to do here is to equate the empirical formula in terms of N to the molar mass in it. And each of the elements involved has its own atomic air mass. So for carbon, we have it as 12. For hydrogen, we have it as 1. Then we're having two atoms of hydrogen that makes it 2. Then for the oxygen, we have one atom of oxygen and the atomic mass is 16 into n and the molecular mass is 180 so if i sum up the 2, 12 2 and 16 that amounts to 30 n equals to 180 so i want to make that n now subject to the formula so i'll have to divide this side by 30 and that will give me 6. so i'll go back to the empirical formula where i have c is o then into 6. So that 6 must multiply each of the elements involved. So I'll have 6, 6, then 8, 12, and 0, 6, which gives 6, 6, 8, 12, 0, 6, which is option A. Then question number 4 says, which of the following statements explain why tetrazosulfate 6 acid is regarded as a strong acid? Acid can be classified as being uh, strong. It may also be con uh, concentrated. It may also be said to be corrosive or diluted in nature. So for an acid to be classified as being strong, it must be able to actually ionize completely in water. So for that reason, we look at the uh, options. Option C says the acid is completely ionized in aqueous air solution, which gives us the answer to that question. Shall we now proceed to the next question, question number five? Say so which of the following minerals? contain fluorine as one of its uh, constant elements. Fluorine as an element belongs to group 7 element, which the general name comes as a halogen. And kaolin actually contains uh, fluorine as one of its constants. We don't have it in cryolite, we don't have it in bauxite, and we don't have it in potassium alum. So shall we now proceed to question number 6? And the question is, the product of the reaction between propanoic acid and ethanol. The process is actually involved, uh, is referred to as acidification. So what we are going to have is that propanoic acid by formula, uh, we see 
CH2 COOH. Then for ethanol, C2 H5 then OH. So the product to be formed now. We are going to have CH3, CH2, then COO, C2, H5, plus air water. And the name of the first product here we have is as ethyl propanoate. So the answer to that question comes as ethyl propanoate, which is option A. So we we'll proceed to the next question. And the question is how many Faraday of electricity are required to liberate 9 grams of aluminium? And the atomic mass of aluminium is actually given to be 27. So we have to use our formula from first law of Faraday, where we have it as mass, then we have atomic mass, then quantity of the charge over number of electrons, then we have the Faraday constant. But for aluminium on its own, it has a charge of 3, so which will actually add, take up 3 electrons to become the metal of aluminium from the aqueous form of aluminium. So now substitute the value of 3 for the value of n. The mass is given as a 9, atomic mass we have it as 27, then for the quantity of uh, charges now, we can represent it as the Faraday. Then, in the question as well, we have three, the value of n to be 3, then multiply by 1 Faraday. But 3 can go in 27, 9 times. And now we cancel out on both sides. We are having the Faraday now to be what? 1. In, so the answer to that question, we have it as a C is the answer. So we'll go to the next question. Which of the following compound of tin is a strong reducing air agent? And most of these reducing agents are of metals. Then we have Z, uh, tin there as a metal as well. But we have the compound of tin, tin 2 chloride, tin 4 chloride, then we have tin dioxide and tin tetrahydride. So the hydride of tin will actually come as a reducing agent. So the answer to that question comes as a tin hydride, which is option D. Shall we now proceed to the next question? Where we have it? So we are having an equation reactant as magnesium solid reacting with aqueous of hydrochloric acid, giving us magnesium chloride and hydrogen being liberated in the equation. So from the equation above, what mass of hydrogen will be produced if 12 grams of magnesium reacted completely with dilute hydrochloric acid? So our equation here, we are bothered with magnesium and likewise the hydrogen in the equation. So we have magnesium metal as reactant and then we have hydrogen gas as the product being formed. Then we think there is something constant about the reactant and the product and that is the atomic mass. Atomic mass of magnesium is 24. Then for that of hydrogen is 1. But we are having two atoms of hydrogen, so we have two. So, but in the question, we are given the mass of uh, magnesium, which is a uh, 12. But we don't know the mass of uh, hydrogen. Let us make it x. So if I cross multiply 24x now, 2 multiplied by 12 will give me also 24. Then how will I now get the value of x? Is for me to divide both sides by 24. So I will get the value of x now to be one in gram because i'm calculating mass of the hydrogen involved so the answer here we have it as option a which is one gram so can we now proceed to the next question which is question number 10. an alkene may be converted to an alkene by alkene is a double bond hydrocarbon and alphatic in nature then we now want to convert it to a straight chain alkene which is saturated in nature so what we have to do is to actually make it have a we, we we add hydrogen to it and that will take place in the presence of nickel as a catalyst so the answer to that question will come as hydrogenation which is a option d shall we now proceed to the next question which is question number 11 now so the question goes the component of air that is removed when air is bubbled into alkaline pyrogallo is 
Then for us, we have air as a mixture containing oxygen, carbon four oxide, nitrogen, water vapor, and solid particles. So passing the mixture of air through alkaline pyrogallium, then oxygen will now be removed. So in the option now, we have oxygen as option B, which is the answer to that question. What volume of distilled water should be added to 400 centimeter cube of two mole of H2SO4 to obtain 0.51 mole of the solution? So this question has to do with what we have as serial dilution. C1, V1, C2, V2. Then for the C1, actually comes at the initial concentration and likewise the initial volume. In the question, we have the concentration as 2, then the volume as 400. Then we're now looking for the volume when the concentration has, is 0 0.1. So in that question, left-hand side now, when we multiply 2 by 400, that gives us 800 already. Then for the right answer, we have 0 0.1, then V2. So making V2 now subject the formula, we have 800 over 0.1. So, I want to make that 0 0.1 now to be a whole number. I will multiply the numerator and the denominator by a factor of 10. So, 800 now multiplied by 10 should give us 8,000 in centimeter cube. Then, 0 0.1 multiplied by 10 should give us 1. So, dividing both sides now, or the numerator by the denominator, then we have 8,000, which is option B. The next question goes, which of the following pairs are both substance deliquescent? A substance can be classified as deliquescent, a fluorescent, or hygroscopic. For a deliquescent substance, when you expose them to atmosphere, they absorb moisture, dissolve in the moisture to form a solution. In the case of the first pair of calcium chloride and H2SO4, they are both uh, hygroscopic. Then for sodium hydroxide and magnesium tetrahydrosulfate 6, they are both deliquescent in nature. In that case, we have option B as the answer to that question. Sodium hydroxide and magnesium tetrahydrosulfate 6. So we now proceed to the next question where we have the shape of carbon 4 oxide, water and methane respectively are. So for the carbon 4 oxide, Carbon 4 oxide, it will go as C, then we have O, then C, double bond O again, which is linear in nature. Then for the water, A2O, we have H, then bond of O, then another O again, making a V shape in it. Then for methane, CH4, we have it on all sides, so H, H, and H. In that case, we have linear, then we have bent, and tetrahydrate, which is option D. So we now proceed to the next question. An element X has two isotopes. And the isotopes, we have the atomic numbers of both to be 10 and 10. But the max number now differs, where we have 20 and 22 respectively, present in the ratio of 1 to 3. The relative atomic mass of X will be. So for us to get the relative atomic mass, what we have to do is to multiply the relative abundance multiplied by the atomic air mass. So for us having that one ratio, 3, you know, just like we have a common ratio. So when we add 1 to 3, that gives us 4. Then the percentage of 1 now in that 4, we have 1 over 4 multiplied by 100, that gives us 25. Then for 3 over 4, multiply by 100, that gives us 75. So, the first isotope now we have 20, multiply by 75, divide by 100. Then the second isotope we have 22, multiply by 25, then divide by 100. So, if we multiply 20 by 75 and divide by 100, that gives us 15. Then, if you multiply 22 by 25 and divide by 100, that gives us 5.5. So, adding both now gives us 20.5 indeed. So, the answer to that question comes as option A, 20.5. So, we can now proceed to the next question. Where we have 500 centimeter cube oxygen was collected over water at 30 degrees Celsius 
and 752 millimeter mercury pressure. What is the volume of the gas at STP? Standard temperature and pressure. So both vapor pressure of water at 30 degrees Celsius now give us 32 millimeter of mercury. So what we have to do here, we need to get the pressure of the dry gas. And that will come as our P1. So how do we actually arrive at that? We have to take away that 32 of the vapor pressure from the 752 given. So 752 minus 30 will give us 722 indeed millimeter mercury. So the volume given in the question, we have its V1 to be 500 indeed centimeter cube. Then for the T1, so which we have to convert from Celsius to Kelvin by adding 273 to that 30, and that will give us 303 in Kelvin. So the standard pressure that we have, we have standard pressure to be 760 millimeter mercury. And likewise, the standard temperature T2, 273 in Kelvin. So we are now to make V2 subject of the formula. Then we have a formula that connects the pressure, volume, and temperature, P1, V1 over T1, P2, V2 over T2. So making P2, uh, V2 subject the formula, we have P1, V1, then T2, over P2, then T1 indeed. That gives us the V2. So substituting P1, which is 722, multiply by the volume, 500, then multiply by the temperature, T2, 273, over the P2 now, which is 760, multiply by the T1, which is a 303. So by calculation, we arrive at one O that is that should be 427, which is option D. So the next question, we're giving this. An element X has the electronic configuration shown above. 1X2, 2X2, 2P6, 3X2, then 3P3. We want to know what element is that exactly. So if you add up the 2 plus 2 plus 6 making 10, then 2 making 12, making 15. So that element in question now is a phosphorus, atomic number 15. So for it now to actually attain configuration of the nearest noble gas, so for it now to actually attain configuration of the nearest noble gas, it needs three electrons. Then it has five electrons in atomosphere shell. So the other element now, they said the reaction of E with halogen X. So X is the halogen. Then E now is the element in question denoted. So it can actually form. So exchange of, it can have valency of 3 and likewise there 5. So the valency for that halogen will just be 1. So it can form E, X3 and E, X5 as well. So which option actually follows that, which is option what? A. So the answer to that question is uh, A. So we'll go to the next question where we have which of the so the question is which of the following group of physical property increases from left to right on the periodic table? So we have ionization energy mentioned. Then we have also atomic radius mentioned. Radius. Then likewise we have also electronegativity mentioned. Then we also have the case of electropositivity as the fourth electropositivity. So out of these four properties of the periodic properties, two actually increases across the period, and two of them also increases down the group. So atomic radius, uh, ionization energy actually increases across the period, and likewise, electronegativity increases across the periods. So for atomic radius and likewise electropositivity, they increases down the group. So in that case, the option now is a, or the answer to that question is a one and three, which is option A. So we go to the next question. Which of the following type of bonding does not involve the formation of new substances? Atoms actually undergoes bonding to attain the stability of the nearest noble gases because the noble gases are actually stable. 
They neither give out electron nor accept electron. So they are very, very stable. So for us, we can have electron being shared by two non-metals that will give us covalent bonds. Then we can also have electron being denoted by one of the participating atom in a non-metal, which give us coordinated bonds. But the case of electrovalent bond, which can also be called ionic bonds, we have to uh, we have the transfer of electron from a metal to a non-metal. So for metallic bond, there is nothing that there is nothing of transferring of electron from one atom to the other. In that case, the answer to that question becomes the metallic bond. So we go to the next question. Here is the mixture of gases actually. Then we have 25 1% of oxygen in the air. We have 0.03% of carbon 4 oxide in the air. Then we have 1% of nitrogen in the air. So we have 1 over 100. But the total volume of air we don't know, which is X denoted. But arriving at 25 for the volume of noble gases obtained, then we now make S subject the formula. 1 multiplied by S will give us X. Then for 25 now multiplied by 100, it will give us 2,500 now in centimeter cube. So the option now we have option C, giving us 2,500 as the option. So we'll go to the next question.